last time we started looking at a system of n degrees of freedom near its uh, equilibrium configuration. So we are assuming motion of the system when it is close to its uh, equilibrium configuration. And actually to be more precise, what uh, we started out was looking at uh, that approximation under which the equations of motion near that equilibrium uh, would be linear. Okay, And then, I mean that was uh, given as an exercise and based on that we approximated the Lagrangian and we saw that, I mean uh, that's what I wrote, that the Lagrangian would have only, um, if you expand the, the potential term, you only need to retain up to quadratic terms okay, in the displacements and also for the kinetic energy, uh, you need to retain only up to uh, terms which are quadratic in uh, the velocity, generalized velocities. Okay, so that's what we are doing. Let me do a quick recap and then we'll proceed further. So as I said just now, in uh, linear approximation, okay, the linear approximation for equations of motion, okay, uh, near the equilibrium configuration, which was set at q equal to zero, so all the generalized coordinates are zero, and the potential energy is also assumed to be zero there or not assumed, it's set to be zero there, then you can write down the Lagrangian in the following form, dot square minus half summation over i, lambda i, q i square. Okay, that's what we um, saw. So you can always, um, go from one set of generalized coordinates to uh, this set which we call normal coordinates okay, under, uh, under which Lagrangians appears like this. Okay, These QIs are called the normal coordinates. That's good. And as is evident here and also I s stated this last time, the system here is behaving as if it is a collection of n one-dimensional systems which are completely independent of each other because there are no cross terms. There is nothing link linking one q, uh, let's say q1 to q2 so or q3 to q7. Okay, So they all are independent which is um, a very nice feature and if our so maybe le let me write that down also so system behaves as a set of n one dimensional systems Okay. Um, also, if our lambda i are greater than zero, so look at a particular uh, generalized coordinate q i, and let's say for that particular coordinate lambda i is zero, then the Lagrangian for the the contribution to the Lagrangian which that generalized coordinate is uh, giving that is that of a harmonic oscillator okay that's also what we saw okay that's where we had stopped last time okay very good. Um, I mean, there are several things that can happen to lambdas. One is they could be positive, they could be negative as well, 
and they could vanish also okay there are three such pol- possibilities because these are uh, uh, corresponding to real symmetric matrices these lambda is these eigen values so they will be real uh, real so it cannot be complex that's one thing now it will be very nice if one of the lambdas vanishes and in fact it will so lam- uh, some of the lambdas will vanish as we are going to so- see soon and probably you can already uh, tell why that m- will happen um now let's say lambda 1 vanishes if that is the case then q1 vanishes i mean q1 does not appear in the lagrangian right so if um, lambda 1 vanishes i'm just taking such a case then q1 does not appear in the lagrangian which means q1 is cyclic coordinate right that we have talked several times earlier and if that is the case then its corresponding conjugate momentum will be a conserved quantity and how do you get the conjugate momentum corresponding to qi you have to take del l over del qi q1 in this case q1 dot which is q1 dot okay and that will be a constant okay um that's one thing now uh, to appreciate what we have let's take a specific example and uh, things will be more clear when we uh, take a f- take up a few examples and uh, we study them in detail and we repeat what we have done in more abstract way uh, in a particular context okay so that's what the plan is for today so i'm going to put all our manipulations algebraic manipulations that we have been doing since uh, last two three videos in the cont- in the context of the following example which is very uh, commonly found in textbooks a triatomic t r i tri atomic molecule so that's what we want to study now okay actually i want to be more uh, specific i want to take a linear molecule l i n e a r linear molecule So what I mean by that is um, the following. You see, when you are looking at um, when I say a triatomic molecule, I mean the molecule has three atoms. So let's say one here, one here, and one here. Okay, that could be a, a configuration. But what I am interested in is three atoms, which are on the line, on a given line. Okay, so they are always, not always, but they are in the line so when you say a triatomic molecule what you uh, a triatomic linear molecule what you really mean is that the configuration is linear that the atoms are on a line when this molecule is in its equilibrium configuration okay so when it is in its minimum uh, potential energy configuration all the atoms lie on a line but when it does something it moves around okay the different particles are moving around of course they will not necessarily remain all in the line okay one may go up one may go down one may do something okay so when i say a linear molecule i mean that the shape which it has in its equilibrium configuration okay so that's the uh, meaning of linear here let me take my what happened black color back Okay. Very good. So, let me write it down here. What I said just now. When I say linear, I mean 
the shape is linear in equilibrium okay so here it is let's say um, not a nice line okay it's line but not beautiful anyway so I have let's say three particles which are placed here like this it will be nice if I can bring in some different color okay okay good um, let me say that this guy is having a mass m1 that one has mass m2 this one has mass m3 okay so these are these are the equilibrium positions meaning that when the particles are situated here they do not experience any force that's what an equilibrium position is right okay that's good um, now if the particles get displaced from their uh, equilibrium locations which I have said that they are they are here I will let's say if this m1 gets displaced by some amount the displacement from this place I will call x1 okay so x1 will give the displacement from this point from this location similarly x2 will give the displacement of this particle from its equilibrium location and m3 from uh, sorry x3 from uh, from this location so let me write down x1 x2 and x3 they are the displacements of m1 m2 and m3 respectively f from their equilibrium positions okay also I am assuming that um, I mean I'm not assuming I'm going to do the approximation which we have been talking about meaning retaining only the quadratic uh, terms in the Lagrangian as far as the potential is concerned also for the kinetic and I'm going to assume the following potential so I say that the potential energy of this system when it is displaced is this so half K some constant and um, so you take displacement of x3 and x2 okay so if okay uh, so if both x3 and x2 are zero meaning the particles are here and here then there is uh, zero potential energy associated with this and similarly if this guy is here the entire potential is zero but the moment this and this and this they uh, get displaced there's a restoring force which is going to create the potential energy and which will be just x3 minus x2 square right because that is how much the the display uh, the the separation has changed right and that is why this will be x3 minus x2 square and similarly here x2 minus x1 square okay and I'm assuming that the strength of the forces are same so that's why the k the the spring constant is same here in both the cases that's one um, assumption I have made and also I have neglected any interaction between m3 and m1 which is 
happening i mean any direct interaction between m3 and m1 that i have um uh, neglected neglected so you can do two small checks you can do the following exercise check that the force on each particle is is zero in equilibrium which will be easy to check um yeah and check that there is a restoring force okay when they are displaced so these checks you can do quickly okay that's good now what i will do is um i will write down u the potential energy as half u i j um x i x j okay and the matrix which will correspond uh, whose corresponding elements are u i j i will denote by um maybe i'll denote like this i'll put one more line to distinguish it from this u okay otherwise it's confusing so when i talk about these elements in matrix form i mean the, the matrix formed by these elements i will denote it by this so you can write um this as k over 2 x3 so i'm just opening up these two squares x3 square plus x2 square minus 2 x2 x3 plus k over 2 x2 square plus x1 square minus 2 x1 x2 correct check that this corresponds to the following u so your u is k maybe on the next sheet will it be better i think it will be better okay let me let me write down here itself k minus k 0 minus k 2k minus k and 0 minus k and k okay um this as i said i will denote like this this you can read off from here so for example uh this half is here that goes away and if you look at x3 square this is the only place with where it appears so there's a k coefficient is k and that's why here you have k okay similarly for x1 square you have a k here but x2 square appears at two places here and here so it has a total 2k and that's why there's a 2k and similarly you can read off the other off diagonal elements okay and also note that this matrix is symmetric as you expect you see the, these are this is a symmetric matrix if you take the transpose you get back the u okay and also this fact that this is a symmetric matrix is independent of your choice of the labels you have put here for the particles so even if you start calling this one as x2 and this one as x1 the matrix will change but it will still remain symmetric okay that's good now let's look at the kinetic uh, energy term or just the t your t is now half um half m1 x1 dot square plus half m2 x2 dot square plus half m3 x3 dot square and again if i write t as half t i j x i dot x j dot in this case um it just um yeah let me write it that way that is the actually correct way of writing it then 
if I similarly denote by T the matrix whose components are T i j then I get that matrix T to be the diagonal matrix of course because it has only diagonal entries m1 m2 and m3 and other entries are 0 m2 0 0 0 and m3 okay that's quite easy now this is good so let's um, now let's do a change of basis and put t as not only diagonal but make the entries on the diagonal as one which is what we have been talking uh, earlier when we were talking about um, simultaneously putting simultaneous diagonal diagonalization of, of two quadratic forms as sum of squares okay so we had put the one which is positive definite as um, as the, the the corresponding matrix as the identity matrix okay and we have already talked about why t is a positive definite matrix so what we want to do is we want to go from the basis x i from these coordinates to a new basis which we will call z and which will be related to our x by the following this is the same thing which we did when we were talking about um, the mathematical aspects some videos ago okay so this is what we want to do and if you do this transformation then your quadratic form t i j x i x j becomes half z i dot square okay that's what you'll get because you would absorb the m i's into the z i's right so this is nice now I have put the T as this so my kinetic term T is now this one which is now is so when I have done this uh, transformation my um, uij x i x j the other quadratic form has turned into the following so uh, to make it slightly easier to understand let me write in this manner okay u x right this has turned into the following so you have um, you had this let me write here you had k um, maybe this is equal to so first I have my u which is k k minus k 0 minus k 2k minus k 0 minus k k is it symmetric it is so it's correct that's our u and we have uh, gone from x to z which makes it the following this is what we have talked in detail earlier so it should be quite understandable what I am doing um, 1 over square root of m1 0 0 0 1 over square root of m2 0 0 0 1 over square root of m 3 okay and here also the same thing uh, okay okay very good that's what it is and you can do the following simple exercise that this is left as an exercise that you can write this as z transpose and then a matrix here which I will write down um, ok 
que maybe on the next sheet will be better okay so you please check that the following is true that whatever i wrote before is same as the following if you do the matrix multiplication you get the following k over m1 minus k over m1 m2 square root there has to be a square root because look at this this has mass dimension m in the denominator i mean what mass dimension one so this should also have uh, so if i have m1 m2 there should be a square root and zero minus k over m1 m2 which is also correct because for it to be symmetric this is what you should get here um, 2k over m2 at least dimensionally this is correct minus k over m2 m2 m3 square root okay the bracket should go some like something like this then you have 0 minus k over m2 m3 square root k over m3 and then you will have a z here okay please check that this is correct let's look at the matrix k 2k m2 m3 okay minus k this 0 so this matrix is symmetric which is what you expect um, because all these transformations are not going to change the symmetry property of uh, the matrix you have so which means i have not made any mistake because if you if i had made any mistake the symmetry property will be the first thing to get spoiled and we would note that there is a mistake but anyhow now that i have gone from x to z what i have in my lagrangian is this half summation over i z i dot square minus half summation over um, i and j u prime let me call it prime i j z i z j okay so that's what we have now now it's the last step that i choose um, i mean i do one more transformation and go from z to q capital q's under which this part will get diagonalized okay uh, or become sum of squares but when that happens this will just go over to q dot square q i dot squares right because the the transformation that is going to diagonalize u will be an orthogonal transformation and under that uh, this will still remain the sum of squares that's what we have talked earlier so that's what i'll do now um, so let's say the matrix corresponding to u prime is denoted by this which is again a symmetric matrix okay so how do you um, do the transformation of course you have to search for the eigenvalues of the matrix u prime right because that is how you construct the diagonalizing matrix so you find out the eigenvalues and you construct the diagonalizing matrix by putting the eigen vectors as the column vectors for example okay so let's say xi denotes the eigen vectors of u prime with it's strange um it's fine lambda and okay this is nicer okay um that's the eigen value equation now because this is a set of homogeneous equations this will have so this is a set or, or let me write it this way it will be more familiar i think i can write this as u prime minus lambda so i'm bringing what you have on the right hand side to the left is equal to zero now this is a set of um, homogeneous equations
okay um, total n number of equations if n degrees of freedom we have for our system and this um, set of equations will have um, non-trivial solution xi only if the determinant of u prime minus lambda i vanishes okay that's the condition for having non-trivial solutions and that's what we have to um, solve now at least to find um, what are the possible lambdas that are allowed okay for our system for the triatomic molecule linear triatomic molecular system i think i have forgot to mention uh, that in this analysis i am only looking at those motions in which the atoms of the molecule remain on the line okay so i'm restricting myself to tho those uh, motions so i'm not looking at those molecules going off the line so it could happen that particle number 1 goes up particle number 3 goes down something of that sort uh, i'm not looking at that i'm just looking at things moving along the line okay i should have uh, mentioned this earlier i forgot okay that's good so now this you see um oh, where is my yeah let me write it down in more uh, explicit way so determinant of u prime minus lambda i oops uh, equal to 0 that is the following equation so what i'm going to do is just insert the lambdas so you have um, k by m1 minus lambda minus k over m1 m2 0 then you have minus k over m1 m2 square root 2k over m2 minus lambda and then you have minus k over m2 m3 square root yes then you have a zero here it's the same thing i wrote earlier but now i have explicitly i mean just the only additional thing is that i have put the lambdas on the diagonal entries minus lambda and the determinant of this should be zero okay now if you see this is a cubic equation in lambda because you are you see you, you take this okay and then you have to multiply these two and you can see clearly that this is going to be cubic um, so let me write down that thing this is cubic in lambda and in general you expect three roots okay now what i'll do is i'll make the molecule to be a, uh, a little more symmetric so i'll put m1 to be m m2 to be a different mass capital m and m3 to be same as m1 small m okay and um, it should be easy to show that with this this will be an exercise um okay please check that you get the following um determinant of u prime minus lambda 1 is k over m minus lambda there's a lambda before and then you have one more lambda minus k 1 over m plus 2 over m okay and that's what you should get and this is 0 okay so what do we have here for solutions so we got uh, three roots for lambda and the, the solutions are lambda is equal to 0 which is coming from here then you have 
lambda equals k over m that is what you would get if you had one oscillator of mass m right a simple harmonic oscillator of mass m would have lambda equal to k over m and it's interesting that we are getting it here and you get another solution so let me put lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 m 2 m over m okay so these are the three solutions which uh, you'll get and please do this exercise these are easy and show that this these are indeed correct what I have written down now um, so we can yeah so one we are noticing that we are getting one of the eigenvalues to be zero okay and one appears to be that of a simple harmonic oscillator and one is different okay so in the next video we'll talk uh, further about this problem and try to understand why we are getting such solutions and using these we will write down our um, Lagrangian in the normal coordinates we are almost there right because we have found the eigenvalues so we can diagonalize with eigenvectors uh, and um, these are the eigenvalues which are going to appear in the in the Lagrangian okay so we'll write down our system using normal coordinates and from there we will do more analysis of the system and um, see how I can interpret the system as um, th this uh, triatomic molecule the linear one as independent harmonic oscillators okay so that is what we would like to see and understand the meaning of the normal coordinates in in this context so that will be for the next video so see you in the next video then